How you doing? My name is Jamil Johnson. I pastor the Word Church in the city of Houston, and I'm so glad that you're here with us today for Every Word Matters. <laughs> so we got to a place as we were in Isaiah. Uh, we looked at the scripture, and this particular scripture that was written actually came 700 years prior to Jesus being born. Um, the prophet Isaiah gives this prophet prophetic prophetic announcement that a, a, a child would be born and a son would be given. And so he, he kind of gives us, not necessarily his name, but some of the characteristics that we would find in his name. Because if we just really looked at it, I mean, there's so many different names that, that, that Jesus has. Uh, but these four, I believe, it really, it really spoke to a people who were going through at that particular time. It was a prophetic word to give them something to look forward to. But I believe it also is something hidden in it that will bless us. And I believe that if you were here last week, you were blessed. Because I think sometimes we know it, but then sometimes life happens and we forget it. We forget that he is a wonderful counselor. The Bible says that, that, that he is so wonderful in, 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 in his ways that it's, it's sometimes confusing. And as we mentioned on last week, that when he begins to counsel you in this wonderful way, it's almost as if he's talking to you because if you've ever been to a counselor, uh, that counselor really just gets you to talk. Uh, marital counseling, premarital counseling, I call it uh, when, we, when we walk down the aisle and say it, I do, uh, but then we're saying I don't, in, in, in some instances, you know, there's intermarital counseling. And then when we just can't go no more, there's postmarital counseling. <laughs> but in that, when you talk to a counselor, and even when you are, are, are maybe in your personal life, you're dealing with some things, a grief counselor, you're, you're, you're trying to get through something, that counselor really doesn't tell you anything new. If you've never gone to a counselor, then you really don't understand what I'm talking about. But if you've ever gone to a counselor, they never really tell you anything new. Their responsibility is to get you to talk so you can hear that you already had the answer. And sometimes when we talk to God, it's not that God needs to talk to us. It, it, this is only for some people that have prayed your way through some of the darkest seasons of your life. It's when you heard yourself praying, you were able to calm your own self down. And before God could do anything, you had already regurgitated what you had inside of you. That's why I say you have to have the word of God inside of you. So when you're going through everything outside of you, you can bring back the word of God. And that's what that wonderful counselor does. He counsels us in such a way that it is almost, um, um, when you look at the word and you translate and bring them out and transliterate those words, wonderful counselor actually means that when he gets through, he leaves you speechless. You would just be a very immature, bad, devious child that when he gets through, you like, but daddy, but daddy, but da when he gets through, you just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he is our mighty God. I'm, I'm going to control myself today. Last week, kind of got the best of me when I started talking about how mighty this God is. And if you've never experienced the mighty God, you've never been tired. If you've never experienced the mighty God, you've never pictured what giving up looks like. 
I'm not talking about the thought of giving up. I'm talking about already in your head. You done played the whole situation out. I'm leaving. I'm going to put my clothes in my car. I'm going to say I'm going to the mall and I'm just going to cut my phone off. You won't see me. I won't see you. I've already put my two weeks notice in. I'm, you already know what, what you played it out. But then that mighty God comes in and say, no, nah, it's not time for all that yet. And somewhere, somehow, you get the win that you were looking for to get the win that you qualified for. You get the W-I-N-D that you were looking for to get the W-I-N that you qualify for. He is a mighty God. We looked at this, 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 this quote last week. As the wonderful counselor, he makes the plans. And as the mighty God, he makes the plans work. That's why I lost it last week. If I had some hair, I would be whipping it back and forth like Willow said. Because this takes him from being that little baby in the manger. This even takes him from being the, the, the emblem on our peace and chain, him being on the cross. This lets me know that before I got here, he had already made plans for me. And because he's a mighty God, it's his responsibility to make the plans work. I think somebody needs to see this. Maybe let me drive this by, tuck it real tight. You remember how we used to, I never could get that thing down. You remember how we used to pass letters in school and we used to fold it, look like the little square? I never could, I never could get that thing down. But let me put it in the little square and bring it to you and drop it off. It's his plan you are just a character in the story. It's his. That's why some of our plans don't work. Because he don't trust you and your plan because your plan going to mess up his plans. And he knows some of the people that you have plans with, they just play in. So he has to somehow separate that, remove them out of the way so his plan can work. He had a plan before you got here. That's why I'm so glad that we talked about a couple of weeks ago his soul love. He loved me so much that I can't mess up his plan. That's why somebody in here who is ready to allow guilt to keep you from having a true relationship with God, I need you to throw that guilt out of the window because before you did it, he already knew that you were going to do it. And matter of fact, sometimes you doing it was a part of the plan because he needed you to have a real testimony. He was tired of people that grew up in a Nordstrom lifestyle that always made it seem like they grew up on the north side. No, Nordstrom, not north side. <laughs> you had to go through what you, go, you went through so you could have a true word to give to somebody. As I said last week, I pray that God blesses us and delivers us in 2019 to be with people who are not travel agents. That's not just looking at pictures and setting up trips for us and they've never been there themselves, but that God would introduce us to some real people who have gone through hell and have come out of it and not too bougie and not too prideful, but that will let you know I've been where you are going, but rather than you falling, let's take this shortcut. And I don't mind you getting in front of me because I know when you succeed, I succeed. That's what I want. God, deliver me from people who are insecure and won't tell me that I'm about to step in a pothole just because they don't want me to get in front of them. Because if you know who you are, what God has for you is for you and can't nobody take it from you. If they could take it from you, it wasn't yours in the first place. You ain't gotta be putting your initials in nobody's car. Going over nobody mama house on Christmas uninvited. If it's for you, it's for you. Leave them people alone. Stop acting crazy. <laughs> Some of y'all need more than a wonderful counselor. Y'all need a paid one. A doctor with a long black couch. <laughs> uh, but the scripture moves on he's more than just being a wonderful counselor and a mighty God uh, he is 
our everlasting Father. I want you to say that He is our everlasting Father. Everlasting. Everlasting. Oh, man. I don't know why when I talk about Him, I start feeling like this. And I just start thinking about the little, the little Energizer Bunny. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. Look at what the definition of everlasting is. Lasting or enduring through all time, eternal, continuing indefinitely. So even if I stop, he can't. He keeps going and 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 going. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He keeps going and going and going and going and going. He's the same yesterday. If he did anything for you in your yesterday, Yesterday or in your yesteryear, he keeps going and going and going and going. And if he did it yesterday, he has the power to do it today. He keeps going and going and going and going. And if he did it yesterday and he's still able to do it today, that means it's nothing you'll face in 2019, 2020, 2025, 2037, 2052 that he will not be able to handle. That's why you need to go to sleep at night because while you are asleep, he keeps going and going and going and going. When your child is out of your, your you can't even see where they are. He keeps going and going and going. Touch somebody and tell them, I'm glad my God has kept going. This third, this third adjective, Ray, don't play nothing. Just let me talk. Because that noise in my back, that noise in my ear make me scream. Uh, this third adjective of him being our everlasting father, we see that Jesus is above and beyond time. Literally meaning that he doesn't start something until he's finished it. Ah, I know that one was kind of deep. It's really not. He does not start anything until he finishes it. That's why you should not fret. That's why you shouldn't be worried. That's why you should flush all them pills, all of that drink down the toilet because you're worrying yourself sick about something that God has already worked out. Everlasting Father. He is above and beyond time. Uh, to, make, to, to make that phrase make sense in scripture form, we're about to read now Isaiah chapter 57, verse 14 to 15. Now, this, this, this is a very exciting scripture because when I read the scripture, it calms my nerves. It speaks to me. But more so than it deals, more so than it dealing with me, it allows me to see how God deals with me. And it will be said, build up. Build up. Prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. Lord, if that wasn't for somebody right there, somebody, this may need to be the word that you have in the back of your head for 2019. This, for your reference, this is Isaiah chapter 57, verse 14. This was a prophetic word that Isaiah was releasing to the children of Israel because everything that they had put their hands on at that time seemed like it was falling apart and Isaiah had to come and encourage the body of Christ. He wasn't encouraging people that didn't know God. He was in 
encouraging the remnant that stayed when everybody else ran he encouraged them that God is saying build up build up you thought that it was time to tear down God say it's time to build up he says prepare the road I don't know where the road is gonna take you but it's gonna be a road that takes you from the nights you had to cry yourself to sleep it's going to be a road that takes you to prosperity and health and wellness prepare the road and remove the obstacles out of the way God say that you have gone through enough obstacles you jumped through enough hurdles you've hit enough potholes remove them out of the way in the words of the Isley brothers nothing but smooth sailing For this is what the high, exalted one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place. This is, now I know verse 14 should have made some leap in somebody, but verse 15 is the one that really going to get you. I live, this is what God said, I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. I'm so much of a God that I live in the cosmos and keep the world from turning upside down. That while you're driving, your car doesn't begin to levitate and the water don't turn upside down and the trees don't come in your house and break up everything. But I am also a God that lives inside of you. Thank you Lord. But I live inside of the contrite and lowly in spirit. And I'm not there just because I don't have nowhere to stay but I'm there to revive their spirit. Revive their spirit and revive their heart. So not only is he everlasting, but he is an everlasting father. And I know for some of us, some of us, some of us don't have a positive perception of what fathers really are. I'll let you borrow mine. His name is Arthur Joe Johnson Sr. I've said this before. My daddy, he's a man's man. Just a few minutes ago, Brother Herman shook his hand. Herman said, Pops, you been working out? Dad's like, no, nah, man, I got good genes. He's a father that even to this point now, me being his pastor, he still fathers me. He'll call me just out the blue. Pastor, I was checking on you. You, you need anything? No, daddy, I'm good. Well, if you need anything, hit me on the hip. Father has access, and he say, if you need something, just call. So if I pick up the phone and call my daddy and say, hey, daddy, I need, my daddy will stop everything to come to me. And if my, if my earthly father will do that, who has limited resources, my spiritual father, who has unlimited resources, if I call him. The Bible say, call unto me and I will answer. But he's such a good father, he's not just a father that, that fathers me with resources but he's a father that if don't nobody else tell me I did a good job, he in my ear. You did a good job, boy. 
You make me proud, boy. Called him one day. Say, man, I just saw you on the Facebook. Some good stuff. All these other people on here with all these people watching their stuff, this is what needs to go virus. <laughs> He's my father. And he's showing me that if nobody else supports you, I got your back. When your heavenly father made you, he made you in such a way that if nobody else saw a reason to congratulate you, he shows you that he's proud of you because every morning his mercies are renewed. is daddy's faithfulness but my daddy is only able to go so far but our heavenly father is before time and he's after time my daddy Arthur Johnson is the son of my grandfather Ephraim Johnson I am the son of Arthur Johnson my boys are my sons. But my everlasting father was the father of Ephraim Johnson, the father of Arthur Johnson, the father of Jamel Johnson, the father of Jalen and Adonis, the father of whoever shall come in that time that we shall see the next 20, 20 years from now. trying to be nobody's grandpappy. <laughs> How far has the Lord taken our sins from us? Farther than the distance from east to west. Look at what verse 13 says. For those people who want to try to bring up your past. And, see, some of us, we don't even like going around the family on holidays because we got a few uppity ones that... remember who I was but I'm not there anymore and I want to tell you this don't even answer to who you used to be if somebody is around you and brings up who you were they're not close to you they may be around you but they're not close to you listen to this because only those that are close to you know who you are And there are some people that's around you that got your last name, but some people close to you, you just met them a few years ago. Because your loyalty proves if you're worth getting close. Not your last name. Your last name may mean I gotta tolerate with you, but your loyalty means I can travel with you. Somebody. Just as parents are kind to their children, the Lord is kind to all who worships him. He is an everlasting father. My prayer today is for somebody who's missing that fatherly figure in your life. Accept him today. Allow him space to come in. Daddy is not concerned about who you used to be. He's not concerned about where you feel. He's more concerned about how we can get up and move forward. What an amazing gift to give back to God. Nothing will be greater than you giving him your life or giving him back your life. And in return, he now gives you peace. Scripture says he moves from being the everlasting father to move to being the prince of peace. We 
see the title of being a prince as now being something that's associated with royalty and just holding a position. But back then, if you were a prince, uh, you were the captain of the army. It was a position that included war. That you were not fit for the title of prince if you never fought. The reason why Jesus is identified as being the Prince of Peace is that he himself is fighting daily for your peace. So if he's fighting for your peace, why are you always trying to find somebody to give them a piece of your mind? In the Old Testament, there was no greater salutation than the word shalom. Shalom, by definition, is a state of wholeness and harmony that is intended to resonate in all relationships. Wholeness and harmony when used in a greeting the word shalom was a wish for outward freedom from disturbance as well as an inward sense of well-being so when I say shalom definition said it is a wish for outward freedom from disturbance and as well as an inward sense of well-being. Uh, that's a whole bunch of Oxford Dictionary words. When I say shalom, my wish is, is you don't entertain no foolishness outside. That nobody steps in your space bringing you anything negative but even more so when I say shalom, I don't want anything internally to be bringing you any negativity. To a people who were constantly harassed by their enemies, peace was the premier blessing. Numbers chapter six, verse 24, through 26, God gave Moses these words for the benediction. I am not closing out now, uh, but I shall, hit it one more time, I shall give you uh, this benediction, these words that the Lord gave to Moses. Said, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Ronald, come here, sir. Herman, come here. I want y'all to stand right here in the center. Stand here in the center. No, just face each other. You've had a long week. Stressed, beat down, and all you can see is disturbance. No shade. All you can see is disturbance. All you can see is chaos. All you can see is pain. You're trying to motivate yourself. You've been to church a couple of times, so you've heard, encourage yourself in the Lord. You're trying, but it's not happening. 
For unto us a child is born and a son is given. The gift that came through Mary has a responsibility now in the earth realm based on this scripture it says y'all stay right here the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace the lord steps in between everything that you're looking at turns his face towards you the disturbance is still there the chaos is still there but god say keep your eyes on me but because God is omnipresent, he's looking at you and he's looking at the disturbance at the same time. He's calming you down and he's canceling this at the same time. Somebody, you need to find a way to tell God, thank you for bringing me some peace. Because if you would have had it your way, you would have probably tried to attack the problem. But God said, uh-uh, you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your... God bless you. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Jesus. For being our peace. While somebody wants something shiny on Christmas Day. While somebody will not be satisfied with what is given to them. Somebody's prayer right now is, I need some shalom. I need some peace. Because in, because in our new age experience, we've put a price tag on who God is. So we've got accustomed to only shouting when somebody's prophesying a car. Or when somebody is saying, you get a job, you get a job, you get a job. But nobody is excited when somebody say, peace is coming to your house. Yeah. Go back to that Luke scripture. This is, this is the release that I want God to give to you. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people he favors. No longer do I want the favor of God and be disturbed. I need favor and peace. That's my prayer that God you would release peace to those that you favor. Because if I don't have the car I got peace. If I don't have the house, I have peace because there are some people in, in mansions that are miserable. We thank you for Jesus. He is a wonderful counselor. He is our mighty God. He is, as we learned today, our Prince of Peace, as well as He is our everlasting Father. And all of us have access to all of that today. But that comes by way of a relationship with Him. He cannot be your peace if you don't want a piece of Him. He cannot be your everlasting father if you've made up in your mind you want to do it by yourself. He cannot be your mighty God if you want to do it in your own power. And he definitely can't be your wonderful counselor if you are leaning to your own understanding. But I won't know how to access every characteristic of him if I won't first enter into a relationship with him. I don't know what your letter to Santa was. I don't know what you asked for. 
But I will tell you this, if you don't receive Jesus, no matter what gifts you get, you won't have the ultimate gift. As we end this series today, next Sunday, I'm praying that God releases a prophetic word for us as we enter into the year of 2019. Next Sunday will be our last service of 2018. So we're ending the ultimate gift today so I can be free to flow prophetically next week. But I am, I am offering you this gift. Jesus. He came that we might have life. And not just any kind of life. But life abundantly. As we bow, there may be somebody that's here right now that you don't know who God is. This is the reason why we've come together today. Wow, what an amazing time we had in service. And I pray wherever you are, you had that same time too. See, the Word of God is amazing, and I'm thankful that we now have the opportunity to combine the Word of God and technology, where we're able to bring our word experience to you so you can personally experience the word if you're watching this on YouTube I want you to subscribe to our channel because I want you to be able to hear the Word of God that comes from the Word Church immediately when we drop a new clip when we drop a new video I want you to be connected and to be a part of our YouTube community I want you to share this with a friend a family member that could benefit from hearing this and if you're in the city of Houston or surrounding areas, I want to invite you to worship with us at the Word Church. We're worshiping at Decaney High School. Uh, it's 22351 Imperial Valley, Houston, Texas, 77073 on Sundays at 1013. We have an amazing time there in worship. Uh, our worship is electrifying. Our, our praise team, man, they, they sing as angels from heaven. And our children... Our children love Kids World. I know you'll enjoy it, and I know your kids will too. Until next time, I'm Pastor Jay. I'm praying for you, and I look forward to our next time to experience the Word together.